Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And this is a video about showing you the future of Unity, Unity 6 and beyond, because Unity had their big roadmap, which was about an hour long. But I'm just going to try and condense it down to show you the best features and the best things coming in the future. One of the biggest things that I've learned from the roadmap is rather than Unity jumping all the way to Unity 7, bringing out a brand new version of the engine, bringing loads of brand new features with loads of things that can go wrong, breaking loads of legacy projects and giving everybody a massive headache, they're looking at creating much smaller incremental updates and slowly, slowly bridging all their major tools to be one unified solution. Whether that's ECS for game object and entities, whether that's core CLR, all their multiplayer services and things that they need to cooperate together to get Unity 6 to where it needs to be to make sure that everything becomes as a unified solution. So as you can see from their release schedule, when Unity 6.3 releases very, very soon, throughout the course of 2026, we will have Unity 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, and into 2027 with 6.7, which will slowly add more and more features with the introduction of the two major pipelines, URP and HDRP. They want to combine these together using the render graph system to use as a base to build on top of. Including that throughout the cycle of Unity 6, you will see their big step to move to core CLR, which will go from the initial integration to testing, to implementing it, to take it to more users, and then finally getting to the point that it'll be fully stable and released because they want to get Unity 6 as an entirety to the point where it's at the best place it can be before they move to big sweeping tool changes. There'll be ECS for all, which is bringing all features of Netcode to entities to all game object projects too. And you might ask how Unity want to support this and want to make sure that they're always up to date with the things that they need. They talk about their production verification in terms of getting major developers, companies and publishers to be able to take the big titles, even the titles that they've created themselves, and be able to test the features so they know exactly what developers need from the start. Over the past two years, they've seen a reduction in issues and faster fixes across the board. This ties in with their developer data framework, which I do have a full video on if you want to learn more. This is about having data available for problems that arise and having you have the full control over what data you share and what data you learn from customers and players from your games to be able to take that profile and learn about new issues. We're talking about great new things that will help your life. If you're a fan of the Unity Hub, in 6.3 they've got more user experience improvements, great customization, new notifications, and in 6.4, they'll have custom templates. So if you've got something pre-configured that you want to use and launch a template, it's been something that's been asked for a very long time. Speaking of their testing and giving you more templates, in 6.3, they will have the multiplayer FPS and the multiplayer third-person style systems, which is a start of their idea of unifying netcode for game objects and netcode for entities in terms of getting those closer together across the Unity 6 pipeline to be able to give you the best starting point that Unity can give you across their tools. Speaking of small things that make a massive difference, in 6.3 you'll see a customizable main toolbar so you can finally customize it to give yourself more options than you've ever had before. In 6.4 we'll see a new stats window and brand new workflows to snapping and the grid functionality. And in 6.3 you'll see a new search backend to be able to be reliably searched much faster and quicker, much better for larger projects. And then in 6.6 .6 onwards, you'll see a brand new, more flexible hierarchy with more visual indicators, customizable columns, and things that can make your searching through thousands and thousands of objects much more easier to manage. And while you're watching this video, be sure to throw a cheeky like and make sure you subscribe because it always helps me out massively. In my opinion, one of the greatest things since Unity's UGUI system that they released in Unity 5 is the platform toolkit. And this is all about having one solution or one API, which is something for cross-platform functionality. So whether you want to release on Xbox or whether you want to release on PlayStation, you'll write one set of code to do each of the specific things that you need to get past certification, whether that's connected storage, whether that's input, whether that's saving or achievements, where you can do a specific tests within the editor to be able to test for things that would commonly come up in certification, which you don't even need a dev kit or the console itself to be able to test these features. You can do them all inside Unity. And to make this work with other platforms, once you've programmed it once, is you install the specific 
platform SDK, and then it will work across all of those things you want to release to. And they've worked closely with Nintendo and Microsoft to make sure that their toolkit works as well as can be to be able to integrate the features that you need. UI Toolkit is one of the tools that will be continuing to develop over Unity 6, which will most likely be their main UI going forward in the future because they released World Space UI in 6.2 and they're continuing to develop on that with in 6.3 with custom shaders and filters, vector graphics, new image control and new aspect ratio properties and brand new APIs to be able to control the classes and interfaces within there. They've added in a range of accessibility tools for new mobile and desktop scrolling, advanced APIs and documentation so you can have screen readers and other things to help people with many facets of problems. But one of the greatest things that I've seen is Unity committed to supporting Unity UI or UGUI, which has been around since Unity 5. It's one of the UI systems which has supported some of the most amazing projects across the Unity ecosystem. And they will continue to support this by adding quality of life improvements and performance optimizations for at least the life cycle of Unity 6. But for now, they continued to give support for this tool, which is really great because I didn't want to see it disappear. If you're a fan of the Mesh LOD feature, which was brought out in 6.2, for 6.3, they'll have Mesh and Skin Mesh LOD features. They'll have more optimizations, a new Mesh LOD API to access this more easily, and scene labels to be able to see these more easily when they change. For 6.4 onwards, they'll have new debug settings to be able to add sliders so you'll be able to see the changes. And they'll in 6.7, they'll expand the LOD generations with control over the level of decimation that you'll be able to create and the generations that it'll produce. Unity do have more lighting features and performance workflows coming. So for 6.3, they'll have light map UV packing with different atlases and low level ray tracing APIs to get more performance on mobile. For 6.7 onwards is screen space reflections for URP and fully dynamic diffuse GI. So you have real time options for lighting in URP. And if you're a fan of 2D, you can now bring in 3D assets and characters into 2D scenes. You just add a sorting group system to this and you can be able to sort the 3D asset as a 2D and render it above 2D assets. And this means that it'll render with 2D lights, sprite masks and all manner of things to act just as normal sprites would. And as high as 6.7, you'll see improvements with different 2D custom lights and the pipelines with custom rendering. They'll have a brand new Sprite Atlas Analyzer to find issues with source textures, multi-page atlases, and underutilized texture space. Unity 6.3 will even add new improvements to 2D bone animations and performance. You'll get something multi-threaded with faster shadows, bone data that costs less memory, and many different improvements thereabouts. There's a new opt-in API, which is a new 2D low-level physics API, which you can get hold of to have more performance over physics calculations. And this is coming in 6.3, but we'll see big, big improvements in 6.7. A great thing coming in 6.3 is actually a new profiler, which is designed to be able to help you understand at more of a quick glance, if you're not an expert in profiling your games, to give you more of a general overview of what the quick tips which could help you make your game more performant and optimize things which will make an actual difference. Now in 6.4, if you know about the Project Auditor, which I have a full video on if you don't understand what that is, and it's a great way to analyze your own full project to find common issues in code, in shaders, and loads of manner of things and give you support. It's going to be fully integrated into the editor to give you the most up-to-date ways to analyze your projects and make them better. And in 6.5, there's going to be a memory profiler with better insights with how to deal with memory issues. They did touch on the use of AI, but not just AI in terms of generations, in terms of texture, sound, and other things that we've seen before, but agents which will help you with so have more of a complex understanding of the editor, of the work that you're doing. You'll be able to do things which handles higher complex prompts have safer and more transparent code, you'll have better focused answers, you'll have a model which will be able to do visual debugging, so it can now receive images from projects or scenes or different references to be able to give you solutions to the issues that you have. In 6.5, they'll have models which can help you understand the profiler data, and especially if you're somebody who doesn't understand what the hell is supposed to be going on, it can take that and give you suggestions on how to make your game performant. In 6.4, they'll be creating a UI builder agent, which will help you take text to UI toolkit layouts. In 6.6, .6, they want to have a quality assurance agent that can help you highlight issues in builds, monitor logs, and do simple tests. 
and in the roadmap, it did end on talking about lots of new live service features, in-app purchases to get more in-app purchases and merchants for everybody who wants to use those features, Unity Vector, which is all focused around getting the targeted players to your games and making sure you find the right players at the right time for the game that want rather than just a random selection of people that might not be interested at all. I do recommend checking out the entire roadmap if that's interesting to you. Let me know down below if you have any thoughts and where you see the engine going and if you're happy with where it's moving at this point in time. And be sure to check out Unity's Black Friday sales which are now on, which will get up to 95% off on assets and I'll, be, and I'll be posting in the community section every day so you don't miss out. Be sure to check out my Patreon too to get over 230 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, but a special thank you to Verishutha and Party of 10 for their amazing support. And for everybody else who comes to watch the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.